Yeah, I was just telling Bierthe uh, that before I came to Denmark, I always had a different format for teaching. I was, I was always invited to speak for a whole week. So I had <laughs> so much time uh, every day, almost like four or five hours to speak. <laughs> so I would speak as slow as, as I could. So when I moved to Denmark, I didn't have the chance any longer of being invited to speak for a whole week. <laughs> but oftentimes speak for five or ten minutes. <laughs> so I have to cram everything for a week into ten <laughs> minutes. <laughs> you know. So maybe I need somebody to, to help me with uh, speaking uh, ability so I can <laughs> learn to pause at the right time. And, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I'm doing this morning is I'm just going to be speaking uh, from from my heart, from the overflow of my thoughts. Uh, it's not something that I have designed uh, so carefully. Uh, uh, but I, you know, we live in a time that is very uncertain, very uncertain in so many ways. Uh, and that is counter uh, intuitive to a, a living in a Western society where everything has to be certain, structured. You know what's going to happen next week, you know what's going to happen next year. But Corona has kind of placed us in a place where we are not always certain about what's going to happen next week. This program is not looking as we designed it to, to be. And we had hoped for the best out of it, but uh, it has turned out this way. And so in a way, we've, we've come to this place where we, we've, we kind of take things spontaneously as they come and make the most out of, out of it. And it reminds me of uh, the text in the Bible in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, where it says, Now faith is uh, the confidence of what we hope for and assurance of what we do not see. And it continues saying that this is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was not visible. And it says somewhere below that everyone who comes to God must come in faith, must believe that he exists and he rewards those who diligently seek him. And uh, this, do we need faith in this time of uncertainty? And is faith that substance we need in a time that we cannot figure out where we're headed <coughs> and how soon things will, will come to an end? Uh, uncertainty is not just simply about not knowing what to do, but if we look at our society as a whole, uh, so many areas are being affected. Businesses, one of the things that make any business inv investment workable and profitable is, a, is when you're able to reduce uncertainty. And I think when you make a business plan, business projection, you borrow money to put into something, it's the expectation that you're going to make some kind of profit out of it. But if the climate is very uncertain, it's very dark, uh, then it actually uh, goes against everything that informs a business IQ or business understanding. So we, we would just realize that we are affected in many ways. But the Bible says that faith, faith is a substance of things that we hope for. Faith is that which minimizes the uncertainty in the uncertain times. And, and I find that kind of really interesting because it says that the ancient, so that is the, the, peop, the ancient, those who were our forefathers of faith, lived by the simple principle of faith. And so faith is not just simply the idea of wishful thinking. Uh, if it says it's a substance, it means that it's something that is concrete, something that can be counted upon. But faith comes as a result of knowing, knowing that God exists. And that is it. That the foundation of faith is not just self, myself as a human being, but that my, my confidence or that which takes away the uncertainty for me is rested upon some, something bigger, someone bigger than my circumstances, my situation. And, and that is how I have tried in, in a time as this to approach life each day is to approach an uncertain time with a certainty in a certain God, uh, knowing that uh, He exists. Now, the existence of God, of course, is not what everyone believes in, um, but that's another question that we have to deal with. 
uh, does the world run on its own? Is the world existing by just sheer laws of nature? Or is there a God who transcends this laws of nature and actually is the cause of them? Um, that is something that we have to talk about in, in a different context. But for me as a Christian, uh, faith has always played a, a very important role. Growing up in, in an African society where certainly there are so many uncertainties around so many things. Government that doesn't work so well, health system that doesn't work so well. So when I, when I look at the corona situation in Nigeria, it's always been like any other epidemic that has always hit Africa. People with very limited access to good health facilities would always have to trust in something higher and bigger than what their system, their broken system can provide for them. So I've learned in my life to trust God for my provision. Uh, whatever form of needs that I have, I've always learned to trust him. And the reality is that he has never failed me. We has not every time things have always worked as I'd hoped, but neither have I always been disappointed beyond what I could cope. So trusting in God in the midst of uncertainty, uh, in the midst of things that are beyond me, has always been that confident, that cornerstone for me, that foundation upon which my life has always rested. And I do not think otherwise when I find myself in a time of uncertainty, in a place where things have always worked perfectly well, at least. Good health system, you know, uh, good research facilities. Uh, if there's anything, again, this time has proven to us is the fact of our limitedness as humans. Uh, however our pride is, uh, however our belief in ourselves of what we can reach, sometimes in moments like this we are humbled and reminded of our human limitations. And when we are humbled in such manner, we're not left on our own. God is always gracious and he is above all of our circumstances and we can always count on him and trust in him. And I think that he has also made it possible for us to cope in many ways and we also have to thank God for the opportunities we have as, uh, with the grace that he has given us in terms of human capacity. We're not able to meet physically in many circumstances as we've always had but we are better than what people would have experienced 100 years ago. We have technology that still keeps us connected to each other. So I always think about uh, you know, the, the great pandemics of the past, how people coped in terms of communicating one with another. Or if you read in the Bible days uh, when uh, the lepro people with leprosy had to be um, ostracized in society and every time they want to join the society they had to always scream out, unclean, unclean so that they don't infect other people. Uh, but we live in a much more uh, efficient society, regardless of the uncertainty. We have facilities that help us connect, technologies that work for us. We have access to materials that help us to protect ourselves and still be not too far apart from each other. We have the face mask, uh, and all, they come in all shapes and size. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm wearing one yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? uh, and so that we can still kind of mitigate this, this whole challenge of, of communicating with one another. So there is great things that we can be thankful for in terms of human capacity. But beyond that, we can always believe and trust that God will provide the strength, the comfort for us to go through these difficult times. There are people who have been impacted in ways that we cannot imagine. Some have lost their loved ones. Yeah, some have been uh, so badly uh, affected by corona because they were infected by it, and they have to deal with certain side effects now. Um, we can only pray for them and trust that God will pull them through that and give them strength to carry on. So my, my, my message this morning is simply the fact that God is our foundation. God is the solid rock in, in a place of uncertainty. Um, there's a song that says, you know, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. When all around us seems like a sinking circumstance, God is always that solid rock that we can stand upon. Because his promises are not just that he would be with us in good times, but that he will be with us all the time. 
in good and in bad time, we can always trust his presence with us, the closeness of his presence. That is always certain. That is always assured. And that is where faith rests. That is a substance of faith. God is a substance of faith. He is himself the giver of faith and the substance of it. And we know that he doesn't fail and he doesn't change. Whether with corona or no corona, God is still the same. Faithful and true. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you can be our solid rock to stand upon in the face of uncertainty. You can be the hope that we have in the face of hopelessness. That we can count on you to carry us through. Like the psalmist says, that though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, he says that I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Help us, O Lord, to draw from the comfort of your presence with us, your closeness, and what comfort it brings and what certainty that brings to life. Just bless this day and bless each one that is listening to this in whatever circumstances they find themselves, that they would feel the closeness of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes. Thank you, Clement. Yeah. Tap, Clement. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Um, Jessica, are there any comments or anything you want to ask Clement? He's here for a few more minutes. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> ask me questions. <laughs> 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 It's very comforting to be reminded because when people are in so much fear, there's also the tendency that people forget, okay? And then they concentrate on these the fears and anxiety. Yeah. But it's always good at the church where a person like you can remind the people mm. that we have this faith, the substance of God, yeah? Mm. It's there. The idea of God is the solid rock. God is the rock of ages. Mm. Not only mm. long time ago, but on, in yeah. all ages mm. of our time, in our history. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say that it's easier for Africans not to give up hope compared with Danes who have much higher expectations perhaps and find this lack of a lot of control Perhaps even more threatening because we are so unused to it. Mm. Well, I, I have often asked myself, what is the measure of faith one needs to please God? And then Jesus says, if you have a faith as small as a mustard seed, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. So it's, it becomes very difficult to, to compare. Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, uh, there is a risk in which the idea of depending on God reduces when we think we have all it takes to deal with the existences of life. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we can do it ourselves, the tendency is to put man in the center. So when we become the focus, uh, I, I think God, God has given us abilities and capacities, you know, uh, but the idea is not that it, it draws us away from him, but it helps us see him more for who he is. So for me, I think, uh, yeah, <coughs> there's a tendency, but I don't know the measure of faith one needs <laughs> at the <laughs> same time. <laughs> yeah, <you know. laughs> Yeah. It was Shakespeare that says that uh, a man who, I don't know, it says, it says tempt not a desperate man. But then there's a saying that uh, a man who is down fears no fall. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so <laughs> someone who has nothing else to <laughs> yeah. is almost not. Please repeat that. Uh, a, a man who is down yeah. fears no fall. He's already down, so he doesn't need to be afraid of falling, you know. Mm -hmm. So for those of us who come from countries that are really economically down, finding everything, this, what what could what worse could happen? <laughs> it's nothing. It's nothing. Just an example. Yeah. In in the Philippines, I experienced. 
typhoons 27 times in a year. Right. And have experienced houses fall down, trees yeah, yeah. fall down, <laughs> uprooted, okay? Yeah. And the first time in Denmark, it was considered as the, the, the oh, orkan, yeah. the yeah. Yeah. storm. Yeah. And then what did they say? Jens, there's a little storm here. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> Only one tree fell down. Exactly. They were so little. They said, they were so little. They were so little. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. But the, the difference between people who believe in the Lord and and those who do not, that it's obvious, also yes. in Denmark, yes. that people really are afraid. And all the time they are checking the news, are reading, what should I do in order to not to be sick or, and mm. do this and, and that. Yes. Uh, I do that too. I, I, I try mm. also to be careful, but uh, you, you see, not sleeping because I'm afraid of, and, and, and being angry at other people because <coughs> I am uh, afraid of being maybe infected, yeah. Yeah, infected, yeah. So uh, that is the rock we are standing on, that we know, no matter what, uh, there is a higher and a more strong uh, foundation mm. that we are standing on, and yes. that it will keep us, and even if we fall down, mm. it will uh, help us to get up yeah. the feet. Yeah, mm. yes, absolutely, yeah. It's very important this, this point of uh, this um, thinking that we uh, this corona make us makes uh, makes us out of control, mm. and that's I've been thinking very much about that mm. um, that message out of control. Mm. Is it true that it will spread us so hard? Mm. Yeah, I mean we can't we can't control oh this yeah. at oh all. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We try to very hard, but it's it's impossible mm. uh, to to control. Yeah. And uh, I think it's, uh, yeah. Uh, somebody uh, said recently that this doesn't come from God, this corona, but God <laughs> can make us think and make us act and make us live in another way, that mm. we is a better way, maybe. Mm. Mm. He can use this corona situation to show us something else in our lives that yeah. we couldn't, didn't think about before. Yeah. But yes, this is being out of control, that's <laughs> mm. that is something is uncertain, as you said, and God is our only uh, uh, certainty in mm. this, mm. in midst of this uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah Corona also has given many scar then this um, for stewards of for at the uh, burn everything. Yeah. Det er rigtigt. Det er mange mange mennesker der kommer til mig og siger, "Be for min familie i Iran, be for, you know, be for them." Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Så so det kan vi be for dem. Og så så som den at mennesker. Ja, det er kristne. Det er dem der kommer og beder der. Ja, det er kristne. Ja, det er kristne. Ja. Men men dit dit sprog at de vil have bøn, okay, og gør de chudevit, okay. Det er rigtigt. Det er rigtig godt. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's it's a time that we all experience in God in in diverse ways, uh, in seeing Him come for us, uh, come to us in, di in different ways. Yeah. I mean, I, I recall um, just reading some some months back in the Old Testament. Uh, about dealing with uh, communicable diseases in communities, uh, particularly in the area of leprosy, you know, because that was a time that that was a big thing. I mean, you think about the thousands of years that that was uh, how, and I've always felt like the in the Old Testament, the holiness of God and community uh, hygiene always seem to go together. You know, cleanliness and holiness are always spoken of God's holiness in, in almost the same breath. Th that he is holy in his nature, but at the same time always requires that, he, that his community, the community of his people, were clean in how they handle the, their own personal hygiene. Mm -hmm. uh, and it reminds me of that in this time. And I, and I recall the, the story of uh, how, you know, the role of the priest 
he also had a he was a community health worker in a way because you know when Jesus healed the leper he said go show yourself to the priest and then the priest is supposed to check and be sure that you were fully you know and and when I think about it we're doing the same thing but in a little bit more technological way <laughs> you know <laughs> people have to be tested twice before they're cleared for corona and I go to the Old Testament and I read I would say it's an old history but you, we're doing the same thing <laughs> <laughs> you know, just with, with a more advanced technology. And it kind of reminds me again that maybe you, there is a side of God's, God's holiness that we need to reclaim also in a time like this. What about personal hygiene? Is God concerned about that? You know, uh, that not only for the fear of, but, but just that personal hygiene for me in the Old Testament and God's holiness were always spoken to us, spoken about. And I also, I've always felt, could holiness actually be the, the only term that was available at that time in a very theocratic society. The holiness becomes the easy term for hygiene and health and, and other things like that. Yeah, I don't know, but just uh, this is my <laughs> speculations, you know. <laughs> but it, it has really challenged me to think about God in a different way. Um, it's a good reflection. Yeah. I find it very important what you say, that God is our rock in the big storm pandemic or whatever yeah. happening in our world and in our mm. world. I have compared the <coughs> pandemic by the, the experience that we had in our family by the hurricane in uh, December the, the 3rd in uh, 99 in our part of the country. Mm. At first we tried to uh, control it mm. to make our house sure to mm. watch the storm but the storm were mm. Mm. more and more up and the last we had to go inside. We couldn't do anything. Everything was out of control. We just couldn't sit inside our house and wait and make uh, the situation uh, uh, happy for our children. Mm -hmm. to, uh, and uh, the electricity uh, went out. We listened to the radio, the radio went out. Mm -hmm. I could phone my neighbor and talk a little bit to him about your situation. Yeah. But we couldn't do anything mm. but wait mm. several wow. hours. Mm. And it was uh, at about uh, nine o'clock in the night. It calmed down, but then it was dark. And mm. the day after, in the morning, we couldn't go out and see how was the situation. Our house was uh, damaged, and our neighbor's house was damaged. Uh, some, somewhere, every house was mm. was uh, uh, damaged by the storm. Yeah. But the people was there still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. some people died yeah. in, in, in the storm. Yeah. Yeah. Four mm. or five in Denmark. Yeah, yeah. that's that's quite unusual. Yeah, in Denmark, yes. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that like unusual? Yeah. And I had it's another experience about the, the late later on. Uh, my daughter is uh, here in town, and, and it was in, at a university, and <coughs> and sometimes they had to tell the, about a great experience in their lives. Mm. And she said, uh, the third of December, '99. Yeah. <laughs> and the other young people from in the northern part of the country. What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you know it. <laughs> I did a good. How old was yeah. she uh, when the storm happened? Your daughter, how old was she? She was uh, four years old. Four years old. Uh -huh. And she could still remember mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. mm -hmm. So it, it left a mark on her, sort yeah. of, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. should yeah. we say thank you very much, mm -hmm. Clement? Thank you for having me. Yeah. 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 I would have loved to stay here and uh, mm. spend the whole day with you guys. Uh, mm -hmm.